Father, Lord, we thank and worship, Lord God, because, Lord, we know you are a God that wants us to be closer to you, and here we have sung that you should draw us nearer. Lord, we pray through thy word that you prepare for us uh, to be able to draw us nearer and nearer unto thee. We pray that you draw us nearer to you, to thyself in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, we pray that uh, the right words that you have prepared for us, our ears, we hear it and understand it at the right time as we uh, teach thy word through me, even this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the topic of today is speak not evil, one of another. Speak not evil, one of another. And our test is taken from the book of James. James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. It says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one Lord giver, who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Uh, these verses we've read, actually, is a continuation of our past Bible study. Which says, the way which was titled, The Way of the Lord. From our previous Bible study, we learned about the way of the Lord. We saw that the way of the Lord is quite different from the way of man. Man in his way is generally proud and self-centered. For example, man look at the outward while God looks at the inside. In 4 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, God told Samuel that look not at his countenance. Uh, for uh, man does God does not see the way man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the inward. For I have not chosen him. So man judge you even before hearing you. God, on the other hand, even though he knows all things, will hear you first before passing judgment. And to walk in the way of the Lord, one, we must take the steps to submit to God. We must do what? Take the step to submit to God. Two, we must humble ourselves before God by doing His will, that is, obeying His word. And three, we should know that there is a reward for whosoever humbles himself before God. However, today, we are studying James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, that we just read, which centered on not speaking evil one of another. We centered on not speaking evil one of the uh, other. You shouldn't encourage her. You say, shh. <clears throat> However, today, we are studying James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. We centered on not speaking even one of another. Though it might appear that God is commanding us not to judge one another, but that is not uh, exactly what God is saying. Because this is the continuation of verse 10 that we studied in our last Bible study. The Lord is saying, any judgment you pass on your brother that is not according to the scripture or according to the word of God is evil speaking. Is what? Evil speaking. But if it's according to the word of God, it is not evil speaking. Are we getting it? So, uh, also, in fact, it is as if you made your own law, if it's not according to the word of God, and you condemn the law of God. 
That's why the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 11, it makes us to know clearly there that if uh, you speak, uh, we should not speak evil uh, one of the other. We are going to study this Bible study of today's titled Speak Not Evil One of Another in three subtitle uh, topics. For a clearer understanding, we are going to see one, speaking evil of the law. Two, the lawgiver and judge. And three, judging your brother lawfully. Judging your brother lawfully. Judging your brother lawfully. So the first point, speaking evil of the law. Speaking evil of the law. James chapter 4, verse 11. It says here, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. To speak evil of the law is to speak evil of God. For the law is the word of God. There are many ways in which people speak evil of the law. Some speak evil of the law directly, while others speak evil of the law indirectly. Those that speak evil of the law directly speak in direct violation of God's word, giving uh, of God's words, giving instructions. For example, in Romans chapter thirteen, let us read Romans chapter thirteen. This is 1 to 5. God gave a directive and his instruction to his children through his word and to all his creation through his word. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. He said, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. And uh, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the ministers, minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For conscience sake. God commands us to be subject to uh, unto uh, higher powers because they are ordained of God, ordained of who? Of God. Instead of obeying God's word, they speak evil of dignities. You understand? Instead of obeying God's word, they speak evil of what? Dignities. And in that doing, they are speaking against the word of God, speaking uh, against the law, speaking evil of the law. God say, I'm the one that ordained them. They say, no, God, you didn't do the right thing. That's what is being said indirectly. Jude, let's look at Jude, uh, verse 8 to 10. Jude, verses 8 to 10. He says here, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. But this speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. You understand? This is passing judgment on dignity, without knowing what is actually the uh, thing that took place or what they did. You understand? 
But remember, God did not say we shouldn't judge. But when you are judging, it must be according to what? Description. But this did not say things according to the scripture, but rather contrary to the scripture. As they disrespect these dignities, they are actually disrespecting God. They are actually disrespecting who? God. Who sent them? Who sent them? Because Jesus himself said it in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He said here, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. In another way, he that disrespects you, disrespects me. And he that disrespects me, disrespects he that sent me. Are we getting it? Yeah. So, uh, by so doing, uh, as they uh, speak against dignity, they are speaking evil of the law. And actually speaking evil of God. Uh, and for those who speak evil of the law indirectly, they do so by trying to judge their brother in an unscriptural way. They try to judge their brother in an unscriptural way. Example of this are Job's friends. Example of this are who? Job's friends. The friends of Job, when they heard what was happening with Job, do I commend them that they came to sympathize with their friend? I commend them that they came to do what? Sympathize with their friend, with the evil that are, uh, for the evil that have befallen their friend. But when they came, they don't know what to say. That's why for some days they were quiet. And the Bible says actually for seven days they were quiet. They didn't know what to say. You understand? They were just so sad. They even tore their clothes to show the uh, sympathy. You understand? But after that time, they opened their mouth. In a, a Job chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that came upon uh, him, they came everyone from his own place, Eliphaz, the Tamanite, and Bildad, the uh, Shuite, and Sophar, the Namantite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. To mourn with him and to comfort him. That's why I say I commend their effort. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads towards heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days. Actually, they don't know what to say. How do we console him? So they just kept quiet for seven days with him and seven nights. And none spake a word unto him. For they saw that his grief was very great. But now in chapter 16, they couldn't hold their peace again. Chapter 16. Men, as they will sat down now for that seven days, not saying anything, many things was running within their mind. The Job sin, maybe it was the fault of Job. You understand? A lot of things was running in their mind. And we see in chapter 16 of Job, verse 2, and uh, he said, Job now said, I have had many such things, miserable comforters, are ye all. Because when they open their mouth, they start now saying a lot of things, Job, you have seen. You are the one that caused this thing. Have you ever seen where the righteous uh, 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 befell such a thing or anything evil? You understand? And they were saying a lot of things. Job, that was feeling pain, now said, you are miserable comforter. You are even increasing my pain. You understand? So he said, he now said they are miserable, comforted. And God Himself at the end, because He said that they don't know, they are not, what they are saying is not scriptural. Because the Lord at times tests the righteous, He permits tests for the righteous. You understand? Like we see that He said, there is no temptation that comes upon you that is not human, that is not common. But when they come, God will give you the door of escape. So temptation may come. You understand? So now, God now have to deal with those condemned the friend of uh, Job because they speak 
uh, against the if they speak evil of the law indirectly in Job chapter 42 verse 7 to 9 God now said unto them and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job the Lord said to Eliphaz the Tamanite my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two son friends for ye have not spoken of me the things that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourself a bond offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your fully, in that ye have not spoken of me the things which is right, like my servant Job. Verse 9, So Eliphaz, the Tamanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and Sophar, the Namatite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord also accepted Job. So we see that we have seen speaking evil of the law. That some spoke evil of, uh, evil of the Lord directly by directly violating uh, the instruction of God, why some uh, spoke evil of the law, uh, speak evil of the law by indirect method, by trying to judge their brother unscripturally, like the friend of Job did. So it is uh, expedient that you will examine yourself and see how you judge your brother. Is this scripturally? Or are you violating the uh, direct instruction of uh, the Lord? If you're doing that, you're speaking evil of the Lord. So the Lord expects you to amend your way, repent, and do it, uh, do things the right way uh, as the Lord wants it to be. Uh, this takes us rapidly to the second point, which is the lawgiver and judge. The lawgiver and judge. In James chapter 4, verse 12, it says, There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Who art thou that judgest another? Before we talk about the lawgiver and judge, let us define the word law. Let us define the word what? Law. What is the meaning of the law? English Oxford Dictionary uh, defined the law as the system of rules which a particular country or community recognizes as re uh, regulating the action of its member and which it may enforce by the imposition of penalties. It is also defined uh, as the body of divine commandments as expressed in the Bible or other religious tests, tests. These two definitions are correct and differ from each other. The former are laws written by men for their nations or communities. And these lawmakers are elected. They are what? Elected. They are called legislators. A legislator or lawmaker is a person who writes and passes laws, especially someone who is a member of a <clears throat> of a legislator. Le legislature, I mean to say. Our legislators are usually politicians and are often elected by the people of the state. This I pick it up from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, now, while the latter are divine, Divine laws are inspired by the divine one who used holy men of God to speak and write that to speak and write them to regulate the lifestyle of humanity and especially those that worship him. We can see that in Second Peter chapter two, chapter one. I mean to say, Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty and twenty-one. He said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. He said, it's not the men that wrote this one. It's not their will. It's not that through the legislators. He said, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is what uh, the Lord is showing us here, uh, that uh, the law we are talking about, that is the law of God, the word of God, is written by the, the Lord himself. But he used the holy men of God to pen it down. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. As I mean to say, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. He said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, for, just like the definition that is to regulate the lifestyle of the people. Of humanity and especially those that are serving God so we see that's why I said all scripture is given by inspiration of God he said it's not by the will of man it's by the inspiration of God still uh, confirming what uh, second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 said so he it says it's by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine to teach for reproof for correction, to make us to know the right way, the right way to live, the accepted way to live, and the accepted uh, the way that is not accepted. For instruction in righteousness, not in unrighteousness, that the man of God, or the woman of God, the boy of God, or the girl of God, anyone that served the Lord, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Not unto any bad works. Unto all good works. So, the only lawgiver and judge is God. For he was not elected. Rather, he is the originator of life and everything. Like we see in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. And also in John chapter 1 verse 1, 2, 3. Let's read that of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verses, uh, verse 16. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It says here, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, where, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created by him and for him. So we see is the only law giver because he, is, uh, <clears throat> he was not uh, elected. He is the originator of all things. Finally, let's go to the last point which is judging your brother lawfully. Since we've seen that the Lord is not condemning us from, is not refusing us from judging at all. Actually, Jesus said uh, that before you judge your brother, you do what? First, judge yourself. Remove the speck, the, uh, the beam in your eye so that I can see clearly to remove from your brother. So he said we can do it. We can judge. We can correct one another. But we must do it scripturally. We must do it out scripturally. So that is why we are looking at it now. That's this last point. Judging your brother lawfully. Or we can say judging your brother scripturally. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. He said, Judge not that ye be not judged. You see, one with, some people will just conclude they say, Don't judge, don't, don't judge, don't judge. They don't know God is talking about not judging scripturally. That's why you need to read up to verse 5 to understand it better. He said, Judge not that ye be not judged. For which, uh, what judgment ye judge? 
ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerate not the beam that is in thy own eye. Or how will thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thy eye? And behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite. We see what verse 5 now say. Thou hypocrite. First, cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the uh, boat out of thy brother's eye. He said, what I'm saying is, first remove the one in your own eye. First judge yourself. First correct yourself. Then be able to see clearly and be able to judge your brother and your sister clearly. And be able to correct your brother and your sister correctly. So that's what the Lord is saying. That's the conclusion. So that those that confuse verse 1 and 2, they will understand what is truly saying in verse 5. So, first, I want us to realize that God is not prohibiting us from judging our brother. But He wants us to judge our brother and sisters in the Lord scripturally. To judge them out scripturally. So, how do we judge our brothers and sisters in the Lord scripturally? To do this, we must first correct ourselves. That is, you must first correct yourself so that you can now see clearly to correct your brother and your sister. That's what we read before in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. Two, judge not according to appearance. Judge not according to appearance. That's the problem of many. They look at the appearance of their brother. They look at the appearance of their sister. They look at the appearance. When I say appearance, I'm talking about believers. You understand? Maybe the believer is not neat enough. Then there is a way you are now class that believer. Yes, it's good to be neat. But neatness is not actually holiness. We understand. But it's good to be neat. One may be dirty and yet be holy. Do we understand? Are we getting that? Though it is true, Englishman say, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. And God also wants us to be neat. But holiness is more than being neat. One may be neat and not be holy. So that's why Jesus said, don't judge according to appearance. Judge not according to appearance. In John chapter 7 verse 24, Jesus said, judge not according to appearance. Judge not according to appearance and uh, in John chapter 7 also but now verse 24 B he said judge righteous judgment don't judge the kind of judgment that has no righteousness in it the judgment of partiality the judgment of my favorite uh, my favorite person you understand judge righteous judgment. These are the way we judge our brother or sister lawfully and scripturally. And four, judging in the fear of God. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, which actually sum up all these other uh, three. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. He says, And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the bread of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Praise the Lord. So we see the way to judge our brother uh, lawfully or scripturally is to judge righteously. 
It's not to judge with the sight or the eye, that is, uh, uh, judging with appearance or judging uh, with what uh, they say, they say, and something like that. You know, hear what the people are saying. No, you judge righteous judgment. You judge what? Righteous judgment. And the Lord will help us. We do that in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and tell the Lord that you will judge righteously. You will speak no evil of anyone. You will make sure all that you do, all your judgment will be according to the scripture. Ask the Lord to give you the grace to do this. To judge according to the scripture. To correct according to the scripture. Judge righteously. Judge not according to appearance. Judge righteous judgment. Ask the Lord for the grace. Ask the Lord for the grace. The grace to do this. The judgment that has no partiality in it. Ask the Lord to help you. You will not speak evil of the law. You will not speak evil of the law. That is, you will not speak against the word of God, against the instruction of God. If you judge anybody, it will be according to the scripture. Ask the Lord to help you to stand within the limit of the scripture. To judge within the limit of the scripture. To do things within the limit of the scripture. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.